I'm sure that Tyson Fury is not retired yet. I'm sure, I'm convinced he wants to fight me. I want to fight him. And if I'm not fighting Tyson Fury, I'm not fighting at all. We are witnessing history. The name of undisputed heavyweight champion is about to be determined for the first time in many years. Ahead of the fateful day, I suggest you to get more acquainted with the paths of the super fight participants. Dear friends, our video today is dedicated to Alexander Usyk's history, one of the most successful amateur boxers of recent years. Please don't forget to leave a like and a four-word comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you could make sure you won't ever miss any new videos. Let's get started. Childhood and Early Years The future champion was born in 1987 in the city of Simferopol. Besides Alexander, there were two kids in the family, older sister and younger brother. As the boy turned six, the familiar surroundings changed for him as his parents made a tough decision moving village. Until I became six years old, I had no worries whatsoever. I just enjoyed life. But in 1991 or 92, when I was six, we moved to Chernigiv Oblast as the Soviet Union collapsed. We moved to my mother's village, so when I was growing up, I understood that not everything was easy for my family. At that time, Usyk was a physically weak and sickly kid, so a doctor recommended his parents to bring the boy into sports to keep his immunity up. It's surprising that the first passions of the boxing future world champion were folk dance and judo. However, all these passions were nothing compared to football, which the boy was obsessed with. He was getting better at this sport each day and soon after started playing for a junior team. But everything had suddenly changed. I played football at that time. I did it quite well. But then my dad told me we had no means to pay for football training and buying a uniform. He was trying to explain to me that it was like that. There was a problem and we couldn't solve it. Luckily, it wasn't all over on football as the new passion came in the life of young Alexander. One day, I was sitting in the yard with my friends and there were some other guys passing by. Where are you going? We're going to boxing. There's a trainer in town. Every day there are great fights. There are coming a lot of people also from other districts. There we can have good fights and learn how to fight. On that day, the future champion met with coach Sergei Jurovic Lapin, who brought the boy to the top of the sport years after. Usyk started competing as an amateur in 2005 when he took part in a big tournament in Hungary. And unknown at that time, Alexander captured the gold in the weight class up to 165.4 pounds. The successful debut was followed by a loss in a competition in Estonia. But after that, Alexander won a new medal in another tournament. Also, Usyk was competing in his home soil during that time and in 2006, he managed to win the gold in the championship of the country. From this year on, Alexander started fighting in a new weight class up to 178.6 pounds. In this weight class, the phenomenon of the Ukrainian boxing school had been terrorizing all Europeans at different tournaments up until 2008, when he got himself a chance of going to the Olympics. Alexander considered it as a simple coincidence afterwards and was very happy just with the fact that he got such a chance to prove himself. Usyk lost to a future medalist in the second turn. Keeping his head up, the guy continued crushing top fighters of Europe in different international tournaments and became the World Cup silver medalist. In 2009, the Ukrainian had solidified his status of cruiserweight and beat very dangerous opponents in the face of Tamer Mamadov and Artur Betobiev in this weight class to win the world championship. With an impressive experience in competitions with an incredible technique and mentality, Usyk 
I feel so damn good. To be honest, I am really shocked right now as after the third and, and soon after announced the beginning of his professional boxing career. Semi-professional career Usyk wanted to start the new chapter of his career in USA, but at the same time he didn't want to leave his family with a team Ukrainian Adamans and started competing as a semi-professional right in his country. This kind of bout wasn't similar to amateur ones as fighters weren't equipped with helmets. The rounds were scored in the same way as in pro boxing but wins and losses weren't counted in fighters' record. The Ukrainian Olympian stepped in the ring without protective equipment for the first time in January 11th of 2013. He faced the Briton Wayne Farr in the division of 200.7 plus pounds. Very talented and experienced Usyk was dominating his opponent during the whole fight, beating him with the use of overwhelming speed advantage. One of the best boxers from Team British Lionheart looked as an absolute beginner and sometimes he could barely stand on his feet after eating shots. As a result, Alexander won every round of the fight. The second opponent of Usyk was the German Eric Brecklin, who competed well as an amateur, but he had a third-rate record of 0-2 in his semi-professional boxing. And again, the Olympic champion was much faster on the feet compared to his slow and flat-footed counterpart. During the first couple of minutes, Eric tried to impose his boxing on Usyk, but later on started going defensive and even there he was getting hit too much. Using right double, the Ukrainian found his pace and finished the exhausted German in round 3. If you're thinking that semi-professional fights of Usyk were only against the unknown boxers, I have good news for you. In the very last fight, the skilled Ukrainian took on the future Olympic silver medalist and the current top heavyweight fighter, the Breton Joseph Joyce. A beefy juggernaut put on a competitive fight against Usyk. Working with big series, the Briton was doing the utmost not to let the opponent get closer to him. Joyce even managed to clip him with a solid left hook in round two, but yet it wasn't enough. The more experienced Alexander made adjustments and looked better in each round, which eventually got him the decision win. It would be interesting to see the rematch between these two top heavyweights today. He's blocking a lot of those punches from Usyk. That's what he's been working on. Quite remarkable in the pro ranks of the WSB. And as you quite rightly say, Richie, he's given an Olympic champion a real run for his money here tonight. On the inside there from Joyce, that was better. Usyk getting confident now as he's coming forward, but making mistakes himself and leaving himself more open. Well, showboat champion. Joe Joyce has done the Lionheart oh. proud here. There's the best. The next worthy challenge for Usyk was a decorated amateur athlete in the face of Mohamed Razou Majidov, who similarly to Alexander competed in the 2012 Olympics and won the bronze medal there. The whole fight looked as a demonstration of the Ukrainian's defensive skills, who was dodging and countering every shot of Majidov while punishing his opponent with 1-2 or 1-2-3 combinations. At the beginning of the bout, Mohamed Razou was trying to get to the body of Alexander and was landing good shots. Somehow, he was too tired to keep on doing that at the end of the fight. As a result, Usyk won every round. The Italian Matteo Madogno was the fifth opponent Alexander faced as a semi-professional. The undefeated as a professional boxer up to this day. Madugno had all possible reach and height advantage and put on a competitive fight against Usyk. Unfortunately, the fight wasn't even close. Alexander's speed was way too much despite all the advantages of his opponent and the Ukrainian Olympian managed to pick the Italian apart and get the TKO win. You can feel them and they're sapping the energy of Madungo in this second round. Another wonderful left and the left is, uh, is really doing the damage of Madungo. 
The final fight for Usyk before making his pro debut was the one against the Europe champion from Romania, Mihai Nisto, who at that time was only 22 years old. Nisto was imposing a very aggressive fight upon Alexander and was trying to press his counterpart against the ropes and land a big straight punch. However, Usyk was avoiding shots nimbly while landing his signature combinations. Despite the setbacks, the Romanian kept moving forward but was inferior to the Ukrainian nonetheless and eventually lost the fight by unanimous decision. Professional career It was clear for Alexander that he should take the next step in his boxing career. So after quitting semi-professional fighting, he started actively searching for a manager and a promotion. Soon after the Olympians signed with the K2 Promotions, the company ran by the Klitschko brothers while Igis Klimas became his manager. The famous James Ali Bashir took on the role of the head coach. When making their professional debut, boxers usually get opponents with a negative record. However, in the light of Alexander's, all titles and accomplishments, matchmakers offered him fighting very experienced and mature champion of Mexico, Felipe Romero with the record of 16-7. The Mexican tried to put away his skilled opponent with looping punches, but failed to do so. Alexander was making slow Romero miss and pay with straight punches. One of the main weapons of Alexander were body shots, using which he was even able to score a knockdown in round three. <laughs> Felipe looked hopeless in the next to last round, so the Ukrainian put an end to his torture with a massive hook. What a great debut! <laughs> Usyk. Seri told me that Felipe had a good right hook, so if he landed it, it would have been fun, but thanks God he didn't. He told me he was going to teach me how to box professionally, and he told the same to Vasya before that. But it seemed that they are students themselves. Pretty quickly, the young talent got himself the next opponent in the face of the Colombian gatekeeper, Epifanio Mendoza, who was on the decline at that time. Usyk didn't rush at the beginning. As he carefully pushed Apifanio against the ropes, the Ukrainian was throwing light shots. However, right in the middle of round two, he launched a massive left hand to knock Mendoza down. After recovery, the Colombian didn't take notes and few minutes later found himself on the ground once again. Feeling a huge superiority, the Olympian started pacing up and soon completely finished his opponent. The third opponent for the Ukrainian professional was the German Ben Safoa. The fight took place in Germany in the undercard of Vladimir Klitschko, who was going to defend his belt against Alex Lepai. The commentator. The Ukrainian can see and read these looping punches. Another attack and the referee doesn't even count. That's a KO. Perfect one-two. The representative of Germany was much shorter than Usyk and was trying to close the gap using sneaky explosions of hooks and overhands. But he was fighting against an extremely skilled boxer of the Ukrainian school who wasn't impressed with such kind of tricks. Working as usual, Alexander was throwing feints and after that started landing on Ben, he's straight from hell. Within only two rounds, Safoa got knocked down several times and a final one-two by Usyk knocked him out cold. When facing his previous opponent, Usyk already knew that he was going to fight on May the 31st in the Sports Palace of Odessa. Everything went smooth and Safoa got destroyed in three rounds. Now it was the turn of the Argentinian two-time champion Cesar Krenz, who became the new step of opposition. At the beginning, the Argentinian was showboating a lot to demonstrate his superiority over Alexander. But the further the bout was going, the less reasons for doing that Alexander was giving his opponent.
painful body shots made Krentz get his hands down in round three, so he immediately got hit by a clean right hook on the defenseless jaw, which led to a knockdown. In the next round, the undefeated Ukrainian was even more actively putting pressure on Cesar and soon ended the bout with a massive body shot. Having reached a humble record of 4-0, the Olympian got the first chance in his professional career to fight for the belt. Usyk was going to win the WBO Intercontinental Championship in case of beating the South African-born Daniel Brewer, who at that time had a reputation of a prominent puncher. It became clear right from the first seconds that Brewer's chances of winning are slim. He simply couldn't keep up with the Ukrainian's punches and all he could do was to keep a high guard which often was inconsistent. Usyk let his hands go. His hooks and uppercuts were heavily bruising his opponent's face. In the seventh round, Brewer looked like a torture victim, while ruthless Usyk was full of gas pedal and with one second left before the final bell, he knocked his opponent out with a clean left hook. Usyk, I talked to Anton Nikolaevich before that and they told me not to rush for a knockout. Just keep on winning each round so you will find it for sure. And I did it. The first defense of the Intercontinental title was set just in two months. The challenger for Usyk's belt once again was South African representative in face of Danny Winter, who at that time had a streak of four spectacular wins. To experts and fan surprise, Danny looked pretty good in the first rounds. He was using his jab well and didn't let the champion get his own pace. However, Alexander started taking over as the fight went on. The Ukrainian made adjustments and started landing on Danny Moore. He was particularly good at stealing away the round's endings. Being way ahead of his opponent in round 9, Usyk launched an incredible combination to finish Winter. Usyk, a tough fight. The guy was well prepared. I was doing what Bashir told me to do. Turn it up a little bit at the beginning, but slow down later because I had to follow the plan. The Ukrainian champion continued his reign and took on another challenger to defend his gold. This time the Russian Andrei Nyesev had his eyes on it. The master of sports in boxing, Andrei started his pro career only three years ago and managed to get 11 wins and secure the title of champion of Russia. The fight was interesting for people in Russia and Ukraine, so it gathered a huge TV audience of more than 3 million people. The beginning of the bout showed a big skill discrepancy between opponents. Being in constant movement, Alexander was taunting his counterpart with a jab and landed straight shots on him. At the same time, it was controlling the space behind him. Nyasev was trying to attack with two three hooks and going to the body, but it was nothing as Usyk was too good at defense. Andre was getting more tired while his defense couldn't handle numerous shots and in round 8, the relentless champion got a finishing sequence. Usyk, thank you all for coming, thank you for your support. The real men step in this ring and put on a show here. Credits to my opponent and sorry for this. It's nothing personal, just boxing. He has mother and father who are watching him. Thank you. It was clear for all boxing fans that it was high time for Usyk moving to the major league and fighting for the main boxing promotions belt. But before doing that, first the Olympian had to defend his title a few times. The first in line was the young champion from South Africa, Johnny Mueller with a decent record of 19-4. In the first round, the champion landed his strongest hand a couple of times and made the startled challenger's face go all red. It seemed that Usyk was looking for a knockout that night. After a cautious second round by Alexander, he started putting more pressure on Müller in the third and knocked him down twice with a left hook. <laughs> Ooh, 
Димашку и продолжает бой. Времени достаточно. Полминуты до конца этого раунда. Еще одно падение. Станет или нет? Да. After getting back to his feet, the South African was still standing firmly, so the Ukrainian took advantage of that and finished him in the corner of the ring. Usyk, we expected to go all 12 rounds. We were prepared and put in a lot of work. I put in a lot of work actually, and yeah, we thought that, and I've seen his previous fights, so we thought it would have gone further. But the fortune is on my side. Thanks God it went this way for me. Thank you to the Almighty for the support. The Olympian took a short rest from fighting and just a few weeks later accepted the new challenge. For the fourth time, another boxer encroached on the WBO Intercontinental Championship belt when he went to the home country of Usyk. This time the one to push his luck was the Cuban Pedro Rodriguez, who at that time had 20 wins with only two decisions. It's worth mentioning that before the fight, he missed weight by more than three kilograms. Pedro was trying to impose his boxing on Alexander, but his punches were so slow that the Ukrainian was able to effortlessly avoid all of those while landing two or three punches with the right hand. In the fifth round, the champion started attacking actively with combinations and in the sixth, he dropped the Cuban with a solid uppercut. Pedro made it to the end of the round, but in the seventh one, Alexander entered a kill mode and finished him ruthlessly with a vicious volume of punches. Usyk. It was all good. There weren't any difficulties. I was doing my job. I can't say, well, I mean it was mildly difficult to do what Bashir was telling me to do and be patient. Be patient and wait for the opponent to make a mistake and then get the job done as Bashir said. The day finally came. With a record of 9-0, the dominant champion from Ukraine got the chance to fight for the belt of the major boxing league, WBO. At that time, it was held by the mighty Polish Krzysztof Glowalski. He took his title away from Marko Huck, who once used to be dominant champion. Glowalski had 26 wins with no defeats, which made this fight against Usyk, who was also undefeated, truly intriguing. Usyk, I'm a realist and here's what I can say about the world champion. He won this title fair and square and now I'm the contender for his belt. You are about to witness a good boxing on the 17th, so buy the tickets and come. Surely there will be something to watch for you. I promised you to show what I drew, so I'm showing now. <laughs> That's a joke. Apart from the statistical interest, the bout was intriguing in terms of boxing technique. Both fighters used southpaw stance and a fight between two masters using this kind of stance is an extremely rare thing. In the first rounds, Usyk was taking a lead role and actively attacking. He was outstriking Glowaski with a jab and opened up a cut around the champion's eye. In the second half of the bout, the Polish started going forward and was quite active, but experienced Usyk wasn't falling for the opponent's shots and kept on dominating. The fight went a full distance of 12 rounds and in the end, the fans heard the name of the new champion. And the new WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Alexander Alexander broke the monumental record of Evander Holyfield and became the cruiserweight champion in only nine fights. The WBO belt was wrapped around the Ukrainian's waist and some changes happened in his life. But one thing remained the same. Once again, Alexander started defending his belt from other boxers' encroachments. The first in line was another South African-born Tabiso the Rock M. Chunu with a record of 17-2. He's a European fighter. 
he fights very safely when he fights. Most, mostly throws basic punches. And yeah, he bounces a lot and he uses his reach. I wouldn't say he's that fast, but he's all right. Once again, it was the battle between two southpaws. Short and stocky African was trying to take the center of the ring all the time and throw shots on his opponents from that. However, wise Usyk wasn't recklessly rushing forward and was landing shots on his opponent carefully. As a whole, Mchunu had some success at the beginning, but after that he gave the initiative away. Alexander found his rhythm in round six and knocked a tough guy down with a long combination. After that, he kept on turning it up and gave Tabiso a true nightmare in round nine. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. And Usyk, the Capricorn in this fight, down, down. has knocked Intuna down. After scoring a knockdown with a 1-2, the champion gave the contender a rough pounding and finished him with another couple of shots. Of the fight in the last 20 or 30 seconds. And we're going down for the second time. And there's the third knockdown. Okay. And now... The second to encroach on the Ukrainian warrior's belt was quite interesting American prospect Michael Hunter. As an amateur, he took part in the 2012 Olympics won by Alexander and also won the National Golden Gloves Tournament. The bounty was undefeated as a professional and had 12 victorious fights behind him. Before his fight, Usyk surprised everyone when he announced the news about him and his longtime head coach Bashir being parted and the former functional conditioning specialist Sergei Vatimaniak taking on that role. It's very important for me to have uh, all four titles uh, because you know, right now everybody's talking, I am a champion, I am a champion, this is, but then you, the one poor guy has uh, all four titles. There is no question who is a champion in that division and it's very important. I was thinking about that. I was, I, I thought about that even when I was fighting in amateurs. One day I'm going to be a pro fighter and I wanted to be undisputed champion. At the start, Hunter made it clear why he was considered as a promising beginner. He was as fast as Usyk and just like the champion, was throwing fast combinations which allowed him winning the rounds, but later on the Ukrainian started pacing up and made Michael start slowing down. With each round, Alexander's pressure was getting harder and his volume was increasing. Heading into the end of the fight, both fighters were tired, but the bounty was clearly more gassed out. After turning on to the fullest, the Olympic champion scored a standing knockdown with a straight left. Yeah. Bill Clancy is getting a standing count. And put a lot of energy into finishing, but the durable American was able to survive till the final bell, losing the fight by a decision. It's not too late to stop it. Eight seconds is a long time. Long time. Go punches back, and over ten punches been thrown just now. He made it. After a convincing second title defense, the Ukrainian soon started preparing for the third one. But all of a sudden, he was offered an incredible deal from big promotions. Trying to draw the audience's attention to a historically not interesting cruiserweight, they decided to target the World Series of Boxing. The champions and main contenders of this weight class took part in it. The prize for the winner was the Muhammad Ali Cup. In the quarterfinals, Usyk faced a longtime WBO belt holder, the German Marco Huck, who was considered as one of the dangerous participants of the tournament. I was taking it very seriously this time because the opponent is very good. Many see him as very strong. He's seen as the favorite, and that's why I've trained with a lot of focus. I'm not nervous. I'm calm about everything. That time when I was nervous before the fight is over, because I've had many fights when I was an amateur, and now I'm a professional. I'm happy because I love what I do. I like boxing. I'm nervous when I'm not boxing, and I am calm when I am boxing. The fight took place in the home country of Marco, and the crowd was actively rooting for him. But it didn't help him against the inherent talent and work ethic of Usyk. Incredibly fast, vigorous and stinging Alexander was floating around Huck and landing many significant one-twos. 
feeling the lack of skills and physique, the German tried to bet on clinching and dirty boxing and even went for hitting the back of the head, but even so, the Ukrainian managed to cover up and protect his head. During the whole fight, Marco was cheating and using many unfair tricks, but even this couldn't stop the champion from entering the state of flow and crushing his opponent with a ruthless combination in round 10. I have no preferences, I just want to box. I need a good opposition to be a good fighter. After getting a solid win against the famous Huck, soon the Ukrainian got the name of his next opponent. It was talented boxer from Latvia, Myris Bredis, who not so long ago got the W against Marco to take the IBO title away from him. Mari's record included 23 wins and no losses, which was saying a lot of his incredibly high level and made him one of the main series favorites. To tell you the truth, I think he's boring. But he became a good boxer and he's quite a skillful boxer since he did become world champion. It's not easy to win world titles and fight through 21 battles, and most of those battles he won by knockout. I don't like his playing style, but that's my own subjective opinion. Because the bar is raised very high. I'm currently the only Latvian professional fighter who is out there and in the front, making this country stronger. I will have followers, next generation boxers, because boxing had died out in Latvia, but we are starting to reanimate it. Fighters were feeling each other out in the beginning of the fight. Bredis took a leading role and was smashing his opponent. Gradually, the Ukrainian turned it on and started fiercely attacking at fast pace. Alexander won all rounds of the middle of the fight, but after the Latvian started imposing his own game on Usyk. He was working as the second number and was successful at counter-attacking, but at some point he enraged into brutal exchanges in the middle and close range. Both boxers left it all for these solid exchanges which exhausted them, but definitely made the fight spectacular. It's gone the 12 round distance on two occasions. It looks as though we're heading for that juncture tonight. In this bid to become the unified champion, we go into the final minute. Good right hand from Breedis. And another shot in the final of the Muhammad Ali Trophy as Breedis lands a cracking right hand around the corner. Fully on display here between these two athletes with perfect records and championship belts, punching right up until the final bell. After the final bell, it was hard to name the clear winner. Somehow Usyk got the split decision win to retain his title and capture the new one in the hardest test of his career. I got another belt in my collection, thanks God. It was very beautiful fight, a very beautiful evening and good fight. Maris is a, it's a very good athlete, so, so everybody was a... It was beautiful, beautiful evening. After nearly losing in the semi-finals of the tournament, the champion realized that he should make drastic changes. He changed the coach once again, but this time his training was led by a far more qualified person in face of Anatoly Lomachenko, the father of famous Vasily Lomachenko, who was Alexander's relative. In the tournament final, the Olympian took on a talented boxer from Russia, Murat Gassiev, who secured two finishes at this tournament and was undefeated. The important thing is to fight, and I have somebody to fight. My team is ready, we're all in a good mood. I'm Phil, I'm very Phil. Very good legs, good speed, good fighter, very good. Toughest fight for, for me right now, for my career. He number one in cruiserweight division right now. In the light of the Ukrainian's most recent performance and finishing capabilities of Gassiev, the odds were equal. But when it came to the fight, Usyk completely picked the Russian apart. 
Murat was looking for a single heavy blow, but such strategy wasn't working against Agile Alexander, who took the control over the ring and was point fighting. Not a single heavy combination by Iron reached its target in the full distance of 12 rounds. So he ended up losing the fight with a devastating decision and gave all his belts to his opponent. Along with the profound title of the undisputed champion, Usyk captured the Muhammad Ali Cup and won $10 million. First of all, we need to take a rest after this difficult fight. After that, we will sit with my team and take the decision. Uh, at this moment, I heard that Tony Bellew is looking for a fight with the winner of Muhammad Ali Trophy. Uh, I hope he would see me talking. Hey, Tony Bellew, are you ready? The challenge wasn't a hollow sound and soon enough was officially announced a huge fight between the undisputed champion Alexander Usyk and top contender the Briton Tony Bellew. In his latest fight he knocked out the veteran of the sport, David Hay, and was going to retire regardless of the upcoming fight result. Starting from this moment, there were talks of the Olympian changing weight class. However, Usyk's answers regarding that were unambiguous. I cannot look too far ahead because on Saturday night I need to accomplish the assignment that my team is going to give to me and only after that I will be able to discuss the future. After Saturday's little stare down and the comment that he passed is, he thinks I'm arrogant. You are not a monster. I'm, I'm white you rabbit. Are, you are a monster. I'm white rabbit. I'm not monster. So he says he believes I am arrogant. But the only thing is, it is not arrogance that he sees. For the first time in his whole career, he sees a man looking back at him who believes he can win, and not a man who believes that he's just going to lose. Because as great as them other fighters are, as good as they are that he's faced and beaten, not one of them goes in there with the heart and the belief that they're going to beat him. I tell you why I chose Tony Bellio, because he is the man who takes the biggest challenges. And he's not the kind of uh, usual boxers who come, see how hard it is and they just quit. He will come to the end. And this kind of fights are something the world want to see. The Ukrainian decided not to reinvent the wheel and as usual gave his fresh opponent first rounds to download all the necessary information in return. Starting from the fourth round, Alexander pushed the pace up and tipped the scale in his favour, but Tony wasn't willing to back down and kept on throwing very fast attacks. The fight looked even, but Belu was getting tired faster and in round 8 he almost stopped moving. Noticing that, Alexander launched a series of heavy one-twos and finished the challenger. He's really closing this gap with, with real, you know, middle of the push. Right now, my biggest concern is my rest, because I want to have a vacation with my family. I had a really tough year, so now I'm thinking about uh, having spending time with my family, with my wife and my children, and after that I will be ready to come up with a with 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 decision, with a final decision. Only a couple of months later, the undisputed cruiserweight champion, Alexander Usyk, announced his long-awaited by many fans transition to heavyweight. It took time for Usyk to change the weight class properly. The Ukrainian hadn't been fighting in the ring for almost a year. Some of his fights were in the works, but got cancelled for different reasons. And finally, we got the fight announcement. Usyk made the heavyweight debut against the tough American gatekeeper, Chaz Witherspoon holding the record of 38 to 4. This is my opportunity. Um, I opened the door and I accepted the challenge. Um, to my uh, opponent, Mr. Usyk and his team, uh, I have nothing but the utmost respect for them. Uh, he's a, a skillful fighter, a great champion, has all the accolades in the world. So I have nothing bad to say about him. I want to thank them for being here with me. I want to thank my friends who are here in attendance my wife who I love so much so I want to thank all of you for being here and uh, to invite you Saturday night to Wintrust Arena Saturday, see you Saturday Okay guys, I'll get there
dressing room. I want to clean my okay? Because it's many events. Right after the opening bell, Usyk started moving fast with a lot of footwork. The kilograms he gained during his weight class change wasn't affecting him so the champion was actively moving as before while throwing shots into the head and body of Chaz. The American veteran wasn't ready for that speed and couldn't even land on his opponent. In the middle of the fight, there were so many strikes so that Witherspoon barely survived to the end of one of the rounds. Sometimes content just to win, but that hurt Witherspoon. And he goes back into the corner. Final seconds. After that, he refused to continue to fight. What a fantastic debut by Usyk. During the rounds, he was gassed in between. This is basically the difference between cruiserweight and the heavyweight, is the dynamics. I felt, I felt that uh, uh, maybe a speed we can hold, but, uh, and even if a punch was landing somewhere like in the shoulder or somewhere, you know, I can, I can tell this guy weights a lot, uh, a lot, he has a big weight. Having felt his power in the new weight class, Alexander decided to go up right away and the very next fight of the Ukrainian boxing school phenomenon was scheduled against the famous veteran of the sport, Derek Chisora, who after losing to Dylan White, got back to the winning column and had a three-fight win streak. He's really a big guy and he hits hard. Uh, I will train hard and uh, I will be in my best shape for this fight. And I tell you once again, I love boxing very much. I love to box. You know, I have to thank Alexander for taking this fight. You know, he's really at the top. He could easily not take his fight. Uh, I'm fighting one of the best fighters out there. The guy knows how to box. There's no two ways about it. You know, I can't get sparring partners who know how to box like him. During most of the rounds, Derek was skillfully using his size advantage and was getting Usyk to clinch from where he was trying to land shots. Over and over, Alexander was getting back to the range, but even there, the old boy was landing heavily on him and with his right hand from time to time. As the fight went on, the Briton started getting tired and slowing down, so the Ukrainian used it and took over to win the bout with the decision. Yeah, I think good uh, my boxing. You know, it, this it's real testing heavyweight. You know, yeah, it's testing. Uh, sort of big guy, hard guy. You know, it's it's beautiful boxing. I love boxing. Yeah. After two wins, Usyk proved his legitimacy in the heavyweight division and got for him and his team a dream fight he had been talking about for a long time. The holder of three main boxing organization belts, Anthony Joshua, beat Andy Ruiz not so long ago to win the rematch. He defended his title twice after that and accepted the fight against Usyk. Guys have been hearing about each other since the 2012 Olympics, where they both captured the gold in different weight classes. You know, every fight uh, makes history. And um, I think um, me and Anthony are going to uh, make another step in history. Um, something that uh, people later will be talking about, um, people will remember, people will be watching it on TV, and it will make history. I wasn't on the amateur scene for long enough to, to know about Alexander, but when I started getting heavily involved in boxing, I do a lot of research. And um, I really love uh, the Ukrainian style. I like the Ukrainian people. Um, I was first, obviously, I'm not an easy fight for anyone. You know, I like fighting. Um, God has blessed me. He showed me the path to get into boxing. And it has to be a reason why I'm here. It's been quick. It has to be a reason. Going into the fight against giant Anthony Joshua, Usyk was a big underdog of at least plus 300, but he greatly surprised everyone. Anthony always looked fast and sharp before, but standing up against a former cruiserweight, he was fighting as if he was in slow-mo and he couldn't land his best shots. 
using the footwork and Tolly Lomachenko's pupil neutralised the strongest hand of the Briton and was always at least one step ahead. In the end of the bout, the Ukrainian went for an aggressive attack and stunned his opponent, but the bell helped AJ not to fall in front of his home crowd. Yet the decision lost for him was obvious nonetheless. The Ukrainian won the fight on the scorecards of all three judges and became the new undisputed heavyweight champion. went exactly the way I expected it to go. There were a couple of moments when Anthony pushed me hard, but just nothing special. Heading into this title fight, it was already known that the boxer's contract included the clause of an immediate rematch. Thus, no one was surprised when they announced this fight. In preparation for fighting Usyk, Joshua completely rearranged the training camp and was getting ready to put on the best performance of his life. The rematch took place in Saudi Arabia. So you set a goal, I've got goals that I want to achieve in the ring on the night and I'm going to be disciplined enough and follow them through. So yeah, that's like competition with myself and as you mentioned about the belts, they mean something but that's all at the end of the target. So it's not like I'm skipping the process, so I'm focused on the process. Yeah, it's true. Uh, we learned each other in the first fight. He learned me, I learned him. But I don't think it's gonna be the new boat. It's gonna be the last boat will be continued for the round 13, 14, 15, or whatever it's gonna last. Indeed, it was a different kind of fight this time. AJ decided to give opening rounds to his opponent, but after that he turned up and engaged into heavy exchanges with Usyk. It was evident that the Briton added some new tricks in his game, including dirty boxing from clinch, which was working pretty well. Alexander maintained his usual strategy and wasn't rushing in. Instead, he was trying to pick his opponent apart from the distance, but pretty often was getting countered. And again, the fight went a full distance, ending up in a decision which for this time was split, but once again in favour of Usyk, who managed to secure the title defence. And still the unified heavyweight champion of the world from Ukraine. And I kept telling myself, you can't not stop, you can't stop. Uh, some uh, big things were at stake. And thanks God, the belts are coming back to Ukraine. The victory is with us and Ukraine won. After retaining his title, the Ukrainian realized that to reach the highest peak in form of the second undisputed championship, he needed one particular opponent named Tyson Fury. Not so long ago, the British King of Heavyweights retired and it seemed that we wouldn't get to see a dream fight with Usyk. But after that, Fury announced his return for a trilogy fight against Chisora. All fans from the bottom of their hearts were hoping that the fight against the veteran wasn't the only goal of Gypsy King and it lived up to their hopes. Right after his victory against Del Boy, Tyson called Alexander out to assure everyone that the fight is on. This is the fight the entire boxing community is waiting for with a sinking heart. Alexander Usyk is one of the best boxers of recent years. After winning every possible prize as an amateur, the Ukrainian did the same as a professional. His record for today is only 20 to 0, but it includes such achievements as becoming the undisputed cruiserweight champion and winning three titles in heavyweight. If he beats Tyson Fury in their potential fight, he'll make a serious claim to be among the boxing goats. What do you think of Usyk and his accomplishments? Can he beat the Gypsy King? Share your thoughts in the comment section.